Hey everyone, welcome to episode 4 of the Birdcast, the official podcast of Warburg Athletics. This is Trent Jackson, Sports Information Director. Our fourth episode features Kyle Briggs from the Warburg Wrestling Team. A native of Cedar Rapids, Briggs is a two-time All-American and Regional Champion at the 174 weight class, and will be heading into his final year at Warburg in the fall. Our conversation included a recap of the season, how Kyle overcame an injury that derailed his entire freshman season, and his strong bond with his father through the sport of wrestling. Thanks for listening. Kyle, what's up, man? Thanks for joining me. What's up, Trent? Semester is about wrapped up. How'd you adjust to all your online courses? It wasn't easy at first. It, and as I'm sure every student knows by now, it's like it's an adjustment for the uh, students as well as the teachers, too. So they don't know how to teach it. We don't really know what to expect. So it's like you have to communicate a lot in areas that we're just not used to so it's Mm -hmm. it's been a lot of just being patient and kind of rolling with the punches yeah gotcha but all together it's been all right yeah i think that's Mm -hmm. a good summary of how life has been as a whole as (laughs) of late just rolling with the punches it's a good way to absolutely so um so first off let's just recap the season a bit first i I guess um we'll get out of the way obviously talking about what was an unfortunate ending you know, mm-hmm. I remember chatting with you guys, I think down in the room, I think the, the day before you guys left. And, you know, I remember um, talking to you a little bit about just asking if you would have a lot of family and friends. Cause obviously that was going to be in your hometown of Cedar Rapids. Just tell me um, what it was like to, to go through all that from your perspective and just how everything went down. It was a roller coaster and You know, in in hindsight, it really was. But at the time, you're like, okay, after every little thing that came up, it was like, okay, you know, don't worry about it. You just got to focus because you have to be like, you got to be lasered in at the the time. But it started out, uh, I want to say like Tuesday, everything was normal. I think Tuesday was the last like normal day. And at that point, we were under the impression we were just going to go up. We're going to train. I think Wednesday was when we were going up, going up training Wednesday and Thursday. And then we, then we compete Friday, Saturday. And at that point we were, we were still training, getting down to weight. Uh, we had full intentions of everyone being there because we didn't think there'd be any issue. Otherwise, uh, I didn't really think much about the whole coronavirus at the time. It was just kind of, it, cause we weren't focusing on it. It wasn't really our priority at the time, but then Wednesday comes along. We're still basically in that groove of training. Like you said, we were with you. And literally right when we're getting in the vans to go up to, or to go down to Cedar Rapids, that was when we got the news from the NCAA that fans would be able to come and there would be limited attendance. And we were like, we didn't, we were at first we were like, well, what do we do? Like, how do we, are are our families going to be able to come? Are we going to get our full like training staff, which was important for a lot of our performances. So there was a lot of questions and there was, so then family members start reaching out and they're like, Hey, what's going on? What's going on? Am I going to be able to come? Should I cancel and trying to get a refund? And I'm like, literally, I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to think. Like, I don't even know if this is real. And, and then we got there. And so this is, so we were there Wednesday night. We train, we get up Thursday again. We're training um, in the morning. So we're, we're in the arena now. And we got to see, like, it was, a, it was an awesome venue. Because Division Three last year at Roanoke, um, I can't, I think, I can't remember what exactly arena it was, but it was really big and it wasn't full for any sessions. Um, and so it was, it was big and it was cool and you could, it was a cool atmosphere, but it wouldn't have been packed and it would have been packed in Cedar Rapids because that arena was just better suited for the type of audience we were able to provide. And when we got there, we knew that we were going to have about, I don't know, two thirds of our audience that wouldn't be there. And that's, that's family and boosters and support friends whatever like for me i would have had a lot of people come like maybe 20 20 people i would have had a whole section i suppose but um when we got there we, we looked around we were like this place is awesome it was it was just renovated a couple of years ago and we were looking through the rows and we noticed that only with like the first sections that were just down on the on the mats those would have been pretty much all the fans because there only would have been about a thousand people in attendance but it was still cool because we, we still got the chills like, oh, this is cool. We're going to be here 24 hours from now. We're going to be on the mat, like scrapping. And that was cool. And we got a train. We got a, we had one session in the arena. We were training. We weighed in. It was, it was cool. 
I, I, I love that kind of stuff going in and training in the morning, but that was our last time in the arena. And so that was maybe like 10, 11 AM. We get back into the hotels. Uh, we go and shower. I actually went home, which was really cool since I live like 10 minutes from the arena. So yeah. uh, I went home and had lunch with my family and I go back to the hotel right when all this is going like right when um, more things are starting to happen. Like it's in the news now about uh, just public health stuff and it wasn't necessarily entertainment. So then by the time I got to the hotel, I think that's when the NBA uh, had Holy officially, yeah. yeah, they went down and I was like, Oh crap. Like, I'm not a basketball guy, but I'm like, I know the NBA, <laughs> I know yeah. they're kind of, they got some pretty big influence, but anyway, I was like, okay, just as long as it's not NCAA. And then about an hour later, maybe within the hour, the NCAA starts canceling stuff. And, it, and I was like, okay, well, what's going to happen? You know, nothing, it wasn't, nothing was really set in stone. It was all like playing it by ear. It was literally, we were on Twitter. We were getting press releases at the moment. Uh, so every like minute there was, there was some kind of update and someone clarifying like, what just happened? What does this mean? And eventually I want to say like two thirty three 3 PM that day, it came out that division ones got canceled and they were competing the week after us. Yeah. And we were about, uh, I'd say like 18 hours away from competing. And I was like, okay, well at that point it, it occurred to me, like if they're going to cancel the division ones there's nothing stopping them from canceling us, even though we're already here. And like everyone, everyone who did come in, like a lot of teams from the East coast, West coast, their families are are already there. They're in town. Everyone's down to wait or train. We literally have like one workout if you want, and then it's go time. And then 20 minutes later, they were like division three, you know, you're done. And it was, it was weird. It was like, it was extremely dramatic to everyone because it was like, well, what do we do? It was, it was unlike anything we would have ever expected. And it was just a weird experience. But uh, ever since then, it's been, you know, you get over it. I mean, I don't, I wish I could wrestle it, but, you know, you can't control it. So, yeah. I mean, I'm sure it was extra hard, especially for like Coach Keller and, and to, you know, break the news to you guys. And I don't know. Mm-hmm. obviously no one had the answers and no one <laughs> knew you know what to mm-hmm. do because it's never really happened before and especially i'm sure you felt for some of those seniors like max forthice max Forsyth, and martin sandoval who had mm-hmm. never even been at nationals before how did you guys yeah. kind of console each other in that process and try to move on yeah every everyone we pretty much all heard it around the same time. We weren't all in the same room. I was actually with the trainers, so I think I was one of the first people to hear it since they had some they had really credible sources. But uh, as far as like those guys that went there and, and will never get to wrestle there is Max and Martine, and it breaks your heart to see, but each of like everyone, we had five or six we had five guys there total and mm-hmm. everyone responded to it differently. Like you know how, like, I don't know if it's like the seven stages of grief, but it seemed like everyone was at a different stage right away. <laughs> and it was like, it was disbelief and not, not just the athletes too. Like all our, our whole coaching staff was like, what the, like, what do you do? Yeah. Our training staff who was, I was with a lot of them. Um, our managers, a lot of family was there. Like a lot of our teammates were hanging out with their family at the time of, that the news was broke. And there was guys like, I was like, immediately i was just crushed because i was i was like man i've i I put myself through such hard training and this like it was the thought of this is all going to be worth it like i get to reap the benefits of all this pain and sacrifice through you know the last year six months of intense training and this is what's making it worth it and it was it was just like all at once it was like well now you don't get a now you don't get to get those you know reap the benefits of it so I was immediately, I was kind of crushed and in disbelief. And I was like, what is going on? And there were some, some guys, like I know Chris, Chris from, he was like, I wasn't in the same room as him, but I didn't need to be to know that he was livid because he was like, and I, I feel bad for him because the guy had, he's had a fantastic season. Him and Max, uh, I didn't see everyone's like immediate reaction, but Martin was like, Martin was in disbelief and he was, it was more probably impactful for them because in the back of my mind, I know even though this is the best opportunity I've had 
in my life to win this championship, that I will, I still have the opportunity for, to win it next year, but those guys don't. So it's like, it's, it's literally like the rug is getting swept underneath, underneath them. So it, we all just felt for, we felt for each other, especially, but those guys, especially, yeah, you know, it was just an unfortunate thing. Right. Yeah. And what are you going to do? I mean, we all fell for you, for you guys, but yeah, thankfully you do have next season. So, I mean, but it was mm-hmm. still a great season for you and the team. I mean, yourself, you going into that, you won the regionals again at 174. And then, you know, you continued to make great strides, um, you know, season by season. So as a whole, you know, before that, mm-hmm. were you happy with, with your season? I was just pretty happy with my season, but ultimately the season is it's largely influenced the how it was is influenced by your performance at the last tournament, which is national. So everything leading up to that, I had, it was good. It was a good season. I had a lot of fun. I made a lot of progress. I had you know I was pushed a lot of the time, but for the most part. I was able to come out on top and I was, I was just really ready for it. Like your, your everything leading up to the postseason is trying to get yourself prepared for it. And I was just as prepared as I could have been. Like I, I'm proud of that, but uh, I just got to do it again now. <laughs> it's like yeah. that's square one. Yeah. Hopefully that gives you kind of a extra motive going in next year. I know you probably don't even need that, but um no, no, not anymore. Now I'm I, literally, literally my back is against the wall. Like I'm, just, yeah. this is it. Right. Um, mm-hmm. Well, speaking of making just strides every year, <clears throat> let's talk about how your career started at Warburg. Some people might not know that you broke your ankle and missed the whole year. Mm-hmm. Um, just <clears throat> tell me, tell me about what you learned in that rehab process and just like the mental battle of not being able to compete. Yeah. Well, that was the first season that I wasn't able to compete in wrestling since I didn't think about this. Probably since I was in elementary school at mm-hmm. some point. I don't even know when. What maybe like I don't know, second third second grade maybe. <laughs> so it was weird, um, and I never had a bad injury like that before. And I've always had them at like maybe I think I had one time. I might've hurt my shoulder in the summer and it wasn't a very long recovery. So, but it didn't affect me like through a season. And this, this um, injury was different. It was like, I say it was broken. It was a, it was actually a severely sprained ankle. I think I, I tore some ligaments in it. So to be quite honest, it's easier to say it was broken. And uh, the recovery timetable was actually longer than that of a regular break. So it was, I mean, needless to say, it was very painful. It was, it took away my season and it wasn't much fun. I hated it. But, uh, uh, afterwards I am thankful now, especially because it, it, now it gives me an opportunity to wrestle next year, which if I didn't, so let's say I didn't break my ankle, then I'd, I'd be done. I wouldn't be talking to you right now. And I would be, you know, I'd, yeah, I'd be in the same boat as, as Max and Martin, yeah. unfortunately. That's interesting uh, how that worked out. Yeah. But the injury itself, let's see. Uh, it was, it was tough because I had never been, I'd never had to deal with an injury like that for, for athletics, but also just like your daily life is totally altered by it because especially since it's a lower, it was a lower extremity injury. You know, I would have broken my arm or something. It wouldn't have affected me getting to class on time. Like this was different because I mean, right when I did it, I did it on a, on a weekend. So I didn't get to go into the clinic right away or go see our trainers who I know that well at the time. So I, my first, well, not my first memory, but, but my trainers, Ryan Callahan, who I'm now good friends with because of this partly, uh, his first memory of me was me rolling into his training room on a computer lab wheelchair that I had stolen just to get from my dorm room to his, uh, to his office. So it was like for the for the first couple of weeks, it was like you got to you got to get used to operating on crutches and with a boot, and and then it got icy out, and that made it even more difficult. <laughs> but it was yeah, it was it was tough. And then also your your academics are affected because uh, mentally you're like, oh crap, I can't I can't wrestle, I can't even train. This has kind of been my identity for the last couple of years, and now I'm questioning it. Now maybe 
you know, am I questioning myself as an academic, you know, am I academically capable of doing stuff? And I just lost a lot of motivation to study. And it, it was actually the worst semester I'd had in my life of academics. Fortunately, I was able to 180 that the next semester. And now I'm, I'm a pretty good student now, but thankfully. Yeah, so we touched on Cedar Rapids. Um, you know, he grew up there, went to Jefferson High School. Um, mm-hmm. I know your dad is heavily involved in the sport. I'd imagine he's probably the one that got you into it. He is. Yep. Um, he uh, he was the he was my coach pretty much my whole life up until college, and he was he was a high school coach from 1980 to 2016, the year that I graduated, and the majority of it was at Jefferson's. So, uh, when I was growing up, he was always a coach and I would hang out with him all the time. So he had a huge influence on me, not only into getting me into the sport, but also just encouraging me um, just to uh, basically just persevere through all the losses and bumps that came with it. Because to be quite honest, when I was younger and even when I was a little bit older, I wasn't, I wasn't really that good. Uh, I was always pretty small and I was in good shape, but I wasn't ever the strongest. I wasn't ever like the fastest. And I just wasn't the most skilled. So I, my childhood wrestling, like grade school through middle school through early high school was like, uh, like I, I look back on it and I'm like, I really wasn't that good. And I didn't, I didn't enjoy it that much too, because when you get older, if anyone wrestles, they, they start to cut weight at any point. And it's not, it's cutting weight sucks. Like nobody likes to do that. Uh, and a lot of my success that I've been able to achieve in the last couple of years is due to me just learning about how to manage weight more, you know, with more precision and being, being more uh, thoughtful about the types of things I'm doing, my food and training and, and just general like weight cutting, I don't know, skills, but, (laughs) but uh, uh, when I was younger, you know, it wasn't much fun. I was, I was cutting a bunch of weight and I was losing a bunch of matches and I was like, this sucks. And my dad's like, you got to keep wrestling. (laughs) It was basically, and I was like, and I kind of built it up in my head because when I, when I was with my dad, when we were young, he would, he would take me to these tournaments and we we went to state. So when I was in elementary and middle school, I would go up to the Iowa high school state wrestling tournament, which to me was like the most, you know, that's the most spectacular stage there is because it's, it's one of the best put on high school tournaments in the country. I, to my well, I think it is. I'm biased, but I'll, but I also yeah. think it's it's a real real well run tournament. It's in a great sure. venue, and that was always the pinnacle of success to me. Was to be able to be a, a state champion at Iowa, and I was I was always like, okay, I want to do that. I want to. My dad was never able to do that, um, and he was in one of the greatest uh, Jefferson teams of all time. Like they were two time state champs when he was there. Um, the team was, and I was like, I just want to follow in his footsteps and I want to make him proud. And I kind of built this in my own head. Like I got to do this. And when it came time to high school, I never did. Like my senior year was probably my best year. And I ended up, I had a really poor state tournament. Um, I lost a couple, I lost one match that head to head with a guy who ended up winning it. And it was a real close match. Um, and I got on the backside and I was like, I'm not, I'm not a state champ or whatever. And then I got in my own head and I ended up getting upset by some other kid and just had a real poor tournament. So with all that, it was like, it was a, my high school career to me was a bit of a disappointment. And uh, I think that was one of the reasons why I wanted to wrestle in college too, was just because I wanted to be able to some kind of make up for it, uh, but also just kind of get what I was never able to achieve in high school, which was, which was really important to me. And to be quite honest, if I was to win nationals next year, it, it probably wouldn't add up to what I'd imagine the feeling of winning state would be like. So I'd, it's, I'm probably chasing something that's not, I won't be able to receive, but I still want to win nationals really bad. So, so I'm, I'm going to try still, but um, yeah, that was kind of my experience with, with uh, dad in high school and he's still a huge part. He's a great supporter, probably my biggest supporter of wrestling. And mm-hmm. he's been a huge part of it. Even after he uh, retired as a coach, he's been refing and, and still he's watching, he's like watching matches and he'll text me and give me like scattering reports. And he's like, Hey, you know, you got this guy coming up, you know, here's some things about him. I've been watching some matches. <laughs> Thanks dad. Like you've been doing no more homework than I have on him. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I love that my dad, he, he kept me in it. He kept me 
I feel like a lot of, I learned a lot of good life lessons from him uh, for it. And I just, I love him so much for that. That's awesome. Um, well, talk to me about your relationship with Coach Keller. You already uh, gave me a pretty good impression. I like that. But just talk about his coaching style and what he's meant to you. Yeah, he coaching in high school versus coaching at college is very different because of the types of maturity that your athletes are at. And in college, especially at Warburg, which is, I mean, to be quite honest, Warburg is its wrestling team. It's, basically a division one team like the way that we train the way that our attitude is i mean we we train hard we we're, we're all pretty for the most part we're pretty tough the most successful guys are very serious about it and we're really dedicated to it um and it's all because of the type of the type of leadership that coach keller has over us and he's he's very encouraging of us but he's also like he'll get on you if you're not doing it right but he wants to support everyone and it's it's cool because keller's a he's a smaller guy like he when he competed, he was a 130, 140 pounder, but he'll still wrestle with guys like me who are, you know, 50 pounds bigger that are, and to be quite honest, we could probably hurt him at any time. And I don't, I don't want to do that. So I'm always hesitant to wrestle with them, but he's, he's still got like, he's, he's a good coach in that he's able to coach guys of my size and guys bigger than me based on, uh, I mean, well, quite frankly, he's, he's good enough to base, uh, to coach our technique, which is funny because the smaller guys wrestle different than big guys. They're a little like, faster and scrambly and they're more like they're more like twitchy and we're the medium to bigger guys are a little slower and stronger and you know it's just a different style but coach keller is able to coach us just as well i i love the stuff that he teaches um his whole coaching staff really is we're we've got a real good coaching staff for the for every type of athlete you know ranging all up and down the lineup from styles to body types to you know different kind of preferences but i like I like Keller. He's, he's the kind of coach that I can go into the, uh, to his office at any time of the day. Um, and if he's not, if he's there, otherwise, if he's not in his office, he's out getting coffee or, or you know, walking someone around and showing he's off tough uh, to find. W. Yeah, he is. You'd, you'd be surprised. <laughs> As, like I'll go in there and I'll see uh, assistant coach and I'll be like, Hey, where's, where's Keller? And they're like, I don't know, getting coffee, you know, going to get some chili or something, going to eat at the, the den or somewhere. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. oh, well, oh, yeah, I'll come back later. But when, when he is there, we're always just like, it's not as serious as we are on the mat and when we're training, when we're just like hanging out, it, we're, that we're doing just that. We're just chilling. Like, we're, we're like, mm -hmm. we're, we're just buddies, I guess. But we're so in the office, we're buddies. And then when we get on the mat, we're, you know, it's a, it's a team coach relationship. But, you know, there's a lot of, yeah, I, have, I have a lot of respect for him. Absolutely. <clears throat> um, yeah, you touched on like some of your teammates that, that train just like a D1 athlete with that intensity. Yeah, I'm sure there's been some great leaders that you've look, looked up to when you were an underclassman. You know, one that comes to mind is like three-time All-American, Eric DeVos, who was also a 174 guy. Is he one? Mm -hmm that you know you really looked up to and what are some of the things that you maybe learned from him or some of the other leaders yeah eric was eric was a great leader and he was a fantastic wrestler uh, because he was just so impressionable on the, his his charisma and just his dominance like he was the kind of guy that you you would he's a lot better like you can you can be really friends with him but then you just respect him for his intensity and his dedication to like excellent matt and he was a beast. Like if you ever see him go, he would break guys. And it was, it was awesome to watch. Like he just, he was one of those guys where you wouldn't ever, I always like to call him like the popcorn matches where like, if you got like a boring match and you're like, oh, I don't really want to watch this guy. I'm going to go to the bathroom and get some popcorn. He wasn't a popcorn match. Like that's the kind of guy I want to be. So, um, and just because he was around my weight too, uh, I, uh, I watched him a little bit more for that, but he was a great guy, great guy to look up, look up to real tough real tough competitor and really mean like he hated wrestling him because he would just beat you up like yeah. i wrestled him when i was a freshman and i was like oh this guy's got some big clubs he just go boom 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 on your head and i'm like oh <laughs> this is in high school <laughs> and it was and he actually came from a couple of division one programs so he was i mean he ba he was basically like a division one guy but uh, between him, he was a national champ. I, I had other national champs that I trained with all the time. Great athletes. Like, uh, 
I trained with uh, Kyle Fank, who was a national champ at 197. And I was, I was one of his day-to-day partners the year that he won it. And I was actually up at 184 at the time. So I was, I was kind of a high weight class for me. Like that's, that's about as high as I'll go. And he was, so I was kind of a shorter 184 pounder. He was kind of a taller, he was definitely a taller 197 pounder. So when, when we wrestled each other, it was like this, like I couldn't, I couldn't reach him. So I always, he always, and his style was so different. He was a mean wrestler too, just like Eric, but he was a more, he was mean. Like if he, if you made him mad, he might choke you out or do something like that or, or crank your back. And you're like, oh crap, I'm not going to do that anymore. But he was a real tough guy. I learned a lot about him. He was a great, uh, wrestler on the mat so his his top game was excellent i i try to emulate that Uh, i talk with him about it all the time and try to get some tips from him but between him and tyler lutz who is the 184 pounder who was actually wrestling uh, ahead of me that year at nationals he was a national runner-up but he was he was a fantastic athlete like up and down the lineup that guy was probably the best athlete including eric uh tyler was probably the best and i wrestled him all the time and he was kind of he was at a weird style but he was so strong that it just kind of it suited him very well and i have kind of a different style too so when we, whenever we wrestled it was always kind of like a it, it could be like a throwing match or it could be like we could be very uh uh like laid back and defensive but most of the time it was like it was like 100 miles an hour ever uh from both guys and it, it was uh uh, it was good. I always wanted to wrestle ahead of him, and I never got that chance. But, uh, but because of that, I was able to learn a lot. Like in that year, I didn't wrestle varsity for the most part. But by the time I was able to start in the lineup next, the next year, I was already wrestling guys that were tougher than ninety nine percent of the guys I was ever going to face in competition in the wrestling room. And that's that's the kind of um, skill you get in the room. Like we have we probably have the toughest room in the country. Like it's, I don't doubt that at all. And because of that, that just leads to so much confidence. Once you're going into competition, you're like, okay, well, these guys are good. And maybe they're number two in the country, but the number two guy in the country is wrestling behind me. Like that's, that's how tough our room is. We, yeah. we have multiple Americans that aren't starting. And uh, so, I mean, whenever you're looking for a partner, you don't have to look very far to find someone who's going to push you. Uh, and right. that's what I love about our room. Yeah. Um, yeah, speaking of guys that just are intense wrestlers, I think you definitely got that in you. And I noticed that early on, um, particularly enjoy your little routine after you check in. I don't know how to explain it, but that little <laughs> jump and then you kind of slap yourself, give out a little yell. How did that start? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Actually, it started out with uh, my uh, my trainer, uh, Ryan Callian of the team trainer. I'm good friends with him. And he was, he started giving Eric and a couple of other guys. I don't know. I don't know how they got a hold of it, but they started taking these ammonia tablets, which is like, it's like a little sniff thing. And it's, it's, it's like nothing, but basically just like wakes you up. Like you use it to revive someone who's unconscious. And it's, mm-hmm. it's like a clear, like focus for just a split second. It's like, Whoa, time to go. And guys would take this and and I took, I started taking them like, like I would, I would take a little sniff of it before the match. And I was like, this is kind of cool. Like it makes me feel a little bit weird, but really what I liked about it was that the guy I'm going against hopefully would see me and he's like, oh, hold on. What did that guy just sniff? And now he's like acting like a psycho. So then I try to like, I try to out cycle them. Cause I'm like, I mean, I'm getting very intense before. Cause I got to like slap my face up and like, like, here we go. Time to go. Really, I'm like, okay, I got to stay calm, go to my strengths. I got to wear this guy down and then put him out. But really, I want him to think, oh, crap, this guy's going to – he's trying to kill me. Like, he's not trying to wrestle me. He's trying to kill me. That's funny. But, <laughs> um, yeah, so I don't know. Yeah, like, I, like, I also like to do something that people like to watch too. Like, like I said, I don't want to be the popcorn match. So, <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. Um, yeah, you're also pretty locked in, you know, throughout the meet before you wrestle. I'll see you with your headphones in kind of pacing around what's on your playlist and how are you preparing mentally? The playlist. <laughs> um, I uh, really don't listen to anything very intense until like, then it starts to pick up. Like, I don't need, I couldn't even tell you like a, like a song, something like, 
I don't know, kind of hard, like a faster, hard beat doesn't really come until like the next match before. But everything leading up to that is like, it's nice and smooth and like funky. Like I listen to Casey and the Sunshine Band, which is like disco music. <laughs> so <laughs> it's all stuff to like kind of calm me down because I got to I gotta get control of my emotions because if you, what I've, I've made the mistake in the past of getting too involved in the matches. Like, for example, uh, the Augsburg and the Loris duels every year, you know, home or away, especially home though. Uh, and this year, especially, I mean, they both of them were just electric. Like if you were in that arena, it was, you were, you were probably sweating and you're just getting amped up and you're getting chills all the time. And that's just from the fans. Like if you're, if you're in it and you're like, okay, this is going to be me in like a half an hour. And you're just like, I'm so jacked up. I'm ready to go now. I'm watching the 125 match and I'm, I'm ready to wrestle, but I don't wrestle for another 35 minutes. So I got to like, I got to get out of there. Everyone else can enjoy it, but I, I can't enjoy it yet. Otherwise I'm going to wear myself out. Definitely a couple, a <laughs> couple awesome atmospheres this year in the Loris and Augsburg mm-hmm. duels. So I think I'd imagine like relative to like scoring a big goal in soccer, maybe a touchdown in football. Um, I'm guessing like a similar feeling is like a big pin in wrestling. Can you explain to me what mm-hmm. that emotion is like? <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty great. If you get a, if you get a big pin, uh, there's a couple scenarios in particular. Uh, and if, there are multiple factors, then it even it contributes even further to how exciting it is. But if you do something cool to pin them, that's awesome. Like if you make a big throw or do like a cool fancy move. Uh, if the guy is like, he's a high, highly ranked opponent, you know, if he's good, if you have a history with them, um, if they're of an opposing team that you guys don't like, or if they're a good, if they're a good team, like anyone from Augsburg or Loris or any, a couple of East East uh, Coast schools or even like Co, top, top 10, top five teams. If you pin anyone from there, that's, that's a big deal because it's good for the team, but it's also good um, for you too. Um, and also just the environment too. So if it's like a spotlight meet, that's even more exciting because it's like, it's just so much more intensity from the crowd and you just feel it, especially with so much on the line this year with Augsburg and Loris. We both had big streaks going into it. So those were exciting. Plus, we're the number one and two teams at any given point throughout the year uh, with those three teams. So it was it was cool. And those kind of atmospheres are something that you really you really can't find anywhere else. Um, like we're the only team. Those are probably the two biggest meets of the year, dual meets of the year besides maybe national duels of any of anyone in the division three. And we're the only one who gets to wrestle them both. So we we have a pretty crazy schedule in that respect, which is which is a lot of fun. But yeah, so pin, pins are great. But usually, usually if I get a big pin, I like to like let out a yell or something and wave at my mom. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, those are some of the <laughs> best moments to capture. Um, yep. And I know wrestlers, I feel like wrestlers are kind of have to be a little bit of a different breed. So I feel like you definitely fit that mold. But, you know, outside of wrestling, what yeah. do you like to do to have fun? And how do you think that personality kind of translates to competing on the mat? Um, well, I love, I love to wrestle and a lot of the things I do outside of wrestling kind of, they can tie into it a little bit. So I have become a pretty passionate lifter. Like I do, I like to do Olympic weightlifting, um, pretty much during the, during the whole off season, uh, every year since maybe my senior year, senior year in high school. And a lot of that type of training has contributed a lot to my uh, overall athletic improvement. Cause I went, like I said, I went from like 150 to 200. And now I'm back down to a lean 170. Like I've become a much, I've become a different athlete and I've become a much better athlete because of the types of training I do there. So I love, I love lifting. And plus it's just something like, Hey, you don't get to wrestle anymore. I'd be like, all right, well, I'm going to go to the gym and I'm just going to lift, but cause I'll, I'll find something else to do. But I like to, and just for fun, I'll lift. Um, I'll do any, any other activities that people like to, you know, I like to play. So um like if a lot of the wrestlers will play spike ball or something or i've got a a good number of people that like to go rock climbing so we'll go on rock climbing trips or um i got a couple buddies that we like to throw the ultimate ultimate frisbee we'll 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 mess around with that in the w or in the quad or something in front of the mensa but usually just anything that's somewhat physical you know we'll put sand volleyball in in may term (laughs) um but yeah yeah hopefully those things can kind of get back to normal you can kind of get on the normal training schedule looking forward to next year yep um mm-hmm. so tell me about you know last year at warburg um 
will be starting in the fall. And you know, you're also a two-time NWCA Scholar All-American. Just t- tell me about your major and how much you've enjoyed your academic experience. I am a business management uh, student here at Warburg, and I will graduate in five years, but I didn't have to. I'm doing this wrestling, so I'm told those employers out there, I'm no dummy, but <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I enjoy I enjoy business. Um, I just like the it's it's kind of like a like the free market is like a competition in itself, so I enjoy that aspect of it. Uh, and we've had some some good uh, we have had some couple of good academic uh, wrestlers. You know, you get some wrestlers get this persona that they're kind of like. Some of them can be like troublemakers, but a lot of them that are really serious about it, they're not only successful on the mat; they're they're successful in other areas because you're not able to achieve that kind of success in one area of your life if you're if you're really skimping out on others. So um, I try to be pretty well rounded in that respect, but. At Warburg, it's pretty easy. We've got we've got good professors. You know, we've got good good facilities, and like we've got a nice business building. I like, and uh, yeah, I don't know. It's it's not a whole lot. I, I'm not. I'm still a student, so I don't have like a an occupation yet. But I'll have a lot more time this year because I actually won't be coming back in the fall. I'll be coming back in the winter. Will be my first arrival is after Christmas. Okay. Do you have any career? aspirations that um you want to try to get into i'd like to well i want to use my business i don't know no know how and whatnot i'd like to start my own business um at following college and i don't know what in yet something profitable that's what i'm looking for but okay. for the time being that's that's the intention is but right now i'm just trying to soak up as much you know uh, advice from other people that have been the same thing try to figure out like what kind of niches or industries and things that I should, that I should, that I should look into or stuff that I should st- try to steer away from. But yeah, okay. I I'll have okay. a lot of time to do that in the, in the mean, uh, in the meantime of training next fall, yeah. cause it'll be just training. Um, and right. then maybe a couple open tournaments. Yeah. Wrestle now, I'll figure out the rest later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For the time being. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Before I let you go, we'll wrap up with, you know, some fun questions. Who was right. your sports hero or role model growing up? My sports hero was Kale Sanderson, and he was, um, he's actually become probably more of a hero. I always liked him because I was like, oh, look, look at, you know, he just dominated guys on the mat, and he was, he basically never lost, and that, that was awesome. Like, I never wanted to lose, and he's doing favorite, my favorite sport in the world, but the more I look at him and the more I watch his matches and, and what he's able to do as an athlete and a coach is he's, he's so technical, and I just like his style because it's, it's it's so engaging and it's so active. Like he's just always going, and I want to be like so. Um, he was he's my he, uh, my sports hero in addition to my dad too. Because uh, if you've like as a wrestling kid, if you ever wrestled your dad when you're a kid, your dad is the best wrestler in the world. Like you, you'll wrestle him, and you'll be like, how could anybody possibly be better than this person? <laughs> and that was that was my dad, and he was he's a great wrestler, and I I love him for what he's able to do. Um, and for my wrestling career as well as just for my whole life like he's he and my mom have been great support for me the past years but yeah um as for like big superstar athletes i'd say kale sanderson if you could call him that yeah. for wrestlers he is mm-hmm. that's cool um if not wrestling what sport would you have liked to excel at oh all right well this is kind of interesting i was thinking about this the other day for some reason and i thought that if i had never wrestled like, let's say I got a different dad. He wasn't like, you got to wrestle. I would probably be, I would probably study law and I would be a tennis player. And I, I, I don't okay. know. I feel like I got the, I got the body for it. And I don't know. I, I always enjoyed it. I just never got to do it very much because it was always, and you know, you always had to like pay. It's kind of like a country club kind of sport. So you got to get someone to, you got to like pay for a coach to teach you. You never really had to do that with wrestling. So. But I, I enjoy it. I think it's cool. I enjoy, I enjoy watching it too. I don't know. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people give it, it'll get some flack for being like, you know, like one of these sports and it can be kind of boring to people. But I, I like it because it's, you know, it's got its own finesse and, and strategy to it too. But yeah, so I'd be a, a, a lawyer tennis player. That would be my other sport. <laughs> okay. I don't know if I can see that. <laughs> I know. It's, kinda, it's pretty far <laughs> off from where I'm at right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, best advice you've ever received? Ooh, from my dad. He said, 
don't sweat the petty stuff and don't pet the sweaty stuff. Okay. And so don't pet the sweaty stuff. Yeah. Just don't, don't worry about the little things and then don't pet the sweaty stuff speaks for itself. That's awesome. Um, okay. Last one. Favorite Warburg memory, maybe from wrestling or just your college experience as a whole. If you can pinpoint Ooh, one. That's a toughie. I don't know. There's a couple good ones. I honestly I I gotta say pretty much any time anytime I'm wrestling in Levick is a pretty good memory. In particular, my very first match in Levick actually happened last year. Um it was it was my very first match. Uh, yeah, I think it was my, it was one of my first matches. No, it was my first match of the year, my junior year or my redshirt sophomore year, I guess. And, uh, I wrestled the kid and I, I ended up pinning him in about 45 seconds, but I hit him with a huge throw in like 25. And it was, it was one of those where I could hear the crowd go like, Oh, <laughs> and I, and I stuck him and then everybody gets up and you're like, yeah, all right. This feels pretty good. <laughs> That was that was a good feeling. That was a good night. Awesome, cool. Hopefully, yeah. we can um, have a few more of those next year. Yep. Hopefully, looking forward to it. Well, thanks again, Kyle, for joining me. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Trent. Thanks for tuning in to the Birdcast. If you enjoyed the podcast, please do us a favor with a retweet at Warburg Nights on Twitter or a share on Facebook. Check out the official Warburg Athletics website at go-nights.net for all the up-to-date news and information, where you'll also find the latest podcast posted. Feel free to email me at trent.jackson at warburg.edu with any feedback, and thanks again for listening.